In this Cortex tutorial, I want to go over elements, which are a very simple but can be very complex feature inside of the app. Now with elements, when we first ran our writer's bootcamp, this was a user favorite. It allowed people to create templates for their writing. It allowed people to remove writer's block from the process because they had a way to continuously write. As an example of that, we can see here in the document itself, there are three elements. These are what elements are. They're pretty much just toggle boxes, named toggle boxes. That's it. We thought it was a very simple feature and it turned out to be a user favorite. And you can start to see if you don't know what to write and say a newsletter or a note or whatever it may be, you can have specific elements in place so that you don't run out of something to write. Because say I have an idea that I want to expand on in a note or I have an idea that I want to write about, I can start talking about the problem here. I can list an example. I can list a process of actionable step-by-step -step advice and boom, I have the outline of a newsletter. I have the section of a newsletter. I have a tweet. I have whatever it may be. I have a nice note of my own ideas. That's the gist of what elements are, but we'll dive into how to use them right now. So starting with the problem is that nobody likes a messy note and that notes can become disorganized very fast. You can have a note in Apple Notes or any note taking app, but when they get longer and longer and longer, it's almost impossible to find the idea that you wanted to reference in the first place. Of course, that's not the end of the world, but you can make it a lot easier on yourself. So with elements, one thing to take into account is that if you select all text in an entire document and you copy and paste it somewhere else, like where you're posting your newsletter, the elements will not copy over with it. So you can copy over pure text even if you organize your documents with elements like this. The next problem is that most writing has a repeatable framework or structure. That's why we study things like copywriting frameworks or we download templates to help us with our note taking and writing. That's why Zettelkasten is a thing. Whenever you write, you probably have a thought process in your head that you could break out into elements and make it a lot easier to write your next impactful piece or take your next impactful note. The next thing here, and the last problem we're solving with this is that templates are useful, but often overcomplicated to the point of not being useful or efficient. In our free community, we've heard this time and time again from our users is that when they download a template from another app, it's cool, it looks good, but they end up not using it after a week just because there's too much there. It doesn't make sense for them to continue just wasting time in something that was supposed to save them time. So elements, keeping it extremely simple and us not overcomplicating this feature is a superpower in and of itself. So enough of the problem. I'm sure you've dealt with that enough. Let's go over some examples. So here I have a few connections to documents that use elements in my Cortex workspace itself. The first thing I have and what I give out in the second brain course in our free community, link is in the description for that. It looks like this. So I have a guided newsletter template or article template or whatever it may be. And you can see here that it looks very clean when you first open it up, you can kind of get the gist of what you're supposed to do. And so I have instructions here, but we can ignore those for now. And you can see that I have custom elements for adding categories and keywords to organize the document, choosing a topic to write about, brain dumping specific ideas, researching. So adding connections, quotes, highlights from your library up here, uh, ideating the actual points inside. So if you have studied copywriting or writing in general or persuasion, you understand what these are and why I created these elements is you usually start with a problem. You hint at a goal to spark desire. You give examples to ground it in reality. You have a process step-by-step -step, actionable steps for value. You have a big idea to capture attention and you can create a concept like the four hour work week or 1% better every day to make that idea your own. And then of course, after all of that, you can map out your key points for whatever you're writing and then you create a hook based on everything that you wrote. So if you were just going into a document without any of these, and it was just a blank document, I don't think the end product would turn out as well than if you were to fill all of this out first and then open a new document in a pane. So 
An example of that is I can create a new document here and let's just call this newsletter or article or podcast or YouTube script or whatever it may be. And if I have my uh, outline over here filled out, I can either start writing my newsletter along with this and have these both open, and then we can open more documents as we go. Now I'm back to the elements document where we're going over everything. And you can see that if we were to follow that last structure where I have my outline open, and then inside the outline, I have other connections. So I can open another document and another document and another document. And I can go through these and I can go to certain ones whenever I need a specific idea. And then I can even open library in a pane and capture in a pane and everything starts to come together as I'm creating the project, be it a newsletter or a podcast or whatever it may be. So to show you another example, this is what the outline kind of looks like when it's filled out. But here, this is where I wrote the actual newsletter and video script for that specific outline. So here I have the hook. And then what I did is I turned each section, it was a pretty long <laughs> newsletter and video. I turned each section, so section one, two, three, four, into these atomic notes elements. So an atomic note in my eyes is a smaller note within a note because if documents get very large, usually you have multiple notes in there and you probably don't want to take them out and put them in another document. And this is especially true for writers or creators who aren't in a note taking habit and don't really care to take notes. You can just write what you were going to write, write your newsletters, write your content, write whatever they were going to be. And then you can place them in specific elements like an atomic note element. And your note taking is done for you because with elements, you can search within specific elements and find them just like you would a document. So now you can start to think of elements as these smaller atomic notes or sub notes within your document because you can do many things with these. One thing that I want to cover here is being able to search elements in and of themselves because these are like mini documents or sub notes or atomic notes, but they don't show up in the navigator over here. So you have to find them by searching for them. And that's why I like to include something like atomic note, because that makes it a lot easier to search. I can go here and I can just type atomic note and then the atomic note element comes up. So I can click this and then it will show all of the atomic notes that I have in whatever specific document that I have them in. And then if I want to click option or alt enter on one of these, I can. So let's go to this one, enter, boom. I have one of my newsletters that is chunked up into atomic notes and a big idea. So we'll go over a bit more of what you can do with elements soon. So I want to continue going through these examples where I'm a writer on social media, X or Twitter, and threads are a very big thing. So if I'm writing a thread, I don't want to just write it in a Google doc or somewhere else like that, because one, I can connect my thread writing guidelines here and I can open this as I'm writing to uh, treat this as a meta document where I have tags where I can click on these and I can find specific writing tips to make my writing better. Uh, I can have a hashtag for all of my threads so I can find them all. I have frameworks if I want to look up copywriting frameworks and I can just go through this as like a guiding note for this specific thing. So whenever I go to write threads, rather than creating a document for each thread, I create an element for each thread and those are much easier to organize for me. Where if I write one thread a week, I can have 12 threads here or yeah, 12 threads here for say three months and then I can create a new document to keep them organized by specific date. But then when we go into the actual thread element, I have more in there like key points. I have my hook, which is my first tweet of the thread. And then I have post elements to separate each one. And as I said, you can copy all of this and paste it somewhere else without copying over the actual elements. Now the thing here with elements or just writing in Cortex in general is when I highlight things, it shows the character count. So 273 characters. When you're writing a thread or something with a character limit, like a LinkedIn post, you're gonna wanna know what that character count is. 
in a specific set area. So inside the element, this is 273 characters. And if I press Command A to select all, it only selects within the element. Now, the last example to go over is just the core notes template, which we give out in the second brain course in our community. But this is what I use to take structured notes. So an open challenge to anyone is to create a system with elements in Cortex for the Zettelkasten or smart note system or other second brain methods in a more simple and streamlined way. So whenever I have an idea, I take it, I plug it into the big idea section of my core notes template. I list out the problem, the goal, whatever comes to mind and I delete the rest. So then I have a fully fleshed out note in my own words that I can reference whenever I'm writing something. So we can go over a few other things with elements here where the first one is just creating an element and a group. So to create an element, you would go to the slash menu and then you type new and then new element or new element group comes up. So to create a new element, you just click this and these can be around anything. I like to think about it from a groups first approach. So groups here, I can have a content group for elements. I can have a landing page or a marketing group for elements. I can have a note taking, I, have, I can have a planning group for elements. And then I can create something like tasks for the planning, or I can create weekly review for the planning. And then I can start to create my own planning template in a document so that I can duplicate that document whenever is necessary. Now, how do you actually manage elements once they're created? You go to your settings, you click on elements, and you can see that I haven't, the groups are a relatively new feature, so I haven't created many groups, but you can see the elements that I have in here, and you can see them in here. I can go in here, I can edit, and then I can change the group, I can save it, and this is where you will edit your actual elements. Now, the other things you can do is you can open an element in a pane and you can link elements to documents. So we can go both ways with this, where I recently wrote uh, this newsletter and you can see here that I have my key points in one big element, right? So I have all of my key points here, but the problem is like, I'm gonna keep scrolling up and down to see all of these other elements and then even <laughs> like writing the actual newsletter. So what I can do is I can click here, I can click open a new pane and then it opens just the element in a pane. And then right here, I can cycle through the elements of this document. So it makes it a lot easier to shift through these quote unquote sub notes within a specific document. And I can have my outline completely open here while still maintaining this cool structure. Now, if I wanted to link this specific element, or let's say you're a student, and you have a definition or a theorem that you're going to be referencing in across multiple different notes, I can come here, I can click copy link to element, and then I can paste it inside of here. And you can see that it's almost well, it is an exact mirror, because if I go here, you see, I have the element here, the element here. And if I start deleting it, it's an exact mirror of it. And then if I wanted to, I could collapse this into an inline element and hover over it to look at more. But all in all, those are elements. So a very simple yet complex and powerful feature that you can use to organize your notes better, create templates, share templates if you want to share a public document with someone else. But that is it. Use elements, show us how you use them. If you want to create a YouTube video on it, we would love to see that. We would love to share it. Aside from that, Thank you for watching. I hope your Cortex endeavors are going well. We'll see you in the next tutorial.